Okay, my friends, this is really kind of serious. You know I have been talking about light, and everything in the ancient text talks about we are children of the light. We are from, we come from the light, literally is what it says. Now, here's what I have discovered. The only place that particles come from of light is on its own accord, and this is exactly what it says in the ancient text, is from where the particles come of their own accord creates life. And here's the own accord, they're coming out of the sun. Now this is a solar eclipse, but all of these particles are coming out of the sun just automatically. There's no, nobody has to plug it in or anything. <laughs> you know I mean? It just shoots out particles, which, which means of its own accord. Now, what is the web of life? What is, these are the only particles that exist, are, the, are particles of light, sunlight. And it's dipole electron flood theory. It, or everything is made of particles that are little tiny dipoles. So instead of a proton being a big thing like that, it's little tiny dipoles. All right? And that's what's shooting off the sun, is all these little bitty particles like this. And some big chunks too, but mostly it's light. And that light spreads out through the universe and ends up hitting us and every other thing that it hits. And whatever it hits grows. Those particles are not nothing. They hit and w w normally they stick and then they grow. And in our case, it's plants. Plants absorb that light and they grow. And then everything feeds off of that growth. And then we end up feeding off of the, the growth of all these other things. And it's a web of life. Light is the raw material. Light is the raw material for life. <laughs> Every single thing there is, is constructed of light. It's atomic vapor. Light is atomic vapor. What is vapor? Vapor is uncondensed things, like, like water, moisture. When you condense it, it turns into matter. In the case of water, it turns into globs of water, liquid. In the case of the raw material of the light coming down, photosynthesis turns it into biological products that support the plant's existence. Those biological products are minerals and metals and everything else. Those are the things that create all these things. And they do it with the help of enzymes, which are bacteria. Bacteria own the universe. All right, so don't forget, everything that, everything that happens, happens because light hit it. And these particles grew into, into matter, all kinds of different matter. So here's the web of life. Light is a raw material. Without that, there is nothing. Light in these different, all kind of different frequencies create different interactions and they grow, change particles in all kinds of different ways because of the interaction of these different frequencies of light. But primarily, we want light to grow plants on Earth. All right? The plants create the, all kinds of different molecules. Plants, when they grow, they have the chlorophyll and then this and cellulose and all kinds of things. Now, plants create the different molecules by arranging the light particles, which are these little tiny light particles, into atoms that have charges on them. So they, they come down as light particles like this. All right, little tiny light particles. And then they condense into matter. All right, now the matter will have charges on it. It means that if there was no charge on it, it was totally neutral, it wouldn't interact with anything at all. It would have perfectly certain number of, of electrons and it wouldn't want to give any up and wouldn't want to take any on. A charge means there's a bunch missing. It, want, it, it says, boy, I'd like to have a whole batch like that come over and attach to me. And they're going to be a whole nother molecule like this, a whole nother thing, and it's going to have that extra stuff, and it's going to go boop, and now they're attached together. That's what a molecule is. Before, a molecule is just an atom. 
Okay, and before an atom is the particles that make up the atom. Right now, they don't know what the particles are. They smash them apart and they look very... Well, the particles are these dipoles. All right, and I've shown that a million times. There's a black one and a white one attached together. That's a dipole electron. All right, we always thought of an electron as just being a negative. No, it's a dipole. It means it has a positive and a negative. And the negative has all the energy and no mass, and the positive has all the mass and, and just pushes. It doesn't have really any energy on its own. It doesn't absorb, it doesn't reflect, it doesn't do anything basically other than attract the white. All right, here's where we get into the back to the uh, biology. Every atom has, that, that has a charge can transfer things and make things happen. Every living thing has bacterial communities inside of us and we're saturated with everything is it's saturated with bacteria and they create ribosomes ribosomes are chemistry sets now the ribosomes contain enzymes and that's the chemistry set the enzymes break and build well, what does that mean break and build enzymes they break up the molecules that are coming through your body so that you can absorb them and turn them into food and turn them into all kinds of different things, including metals. And that's so they break them up and then they build them right back up again. And that's because of the enzymes. Enzymes can work millions of times faster per second than would be possible. Plus, they don't get used up. They just go and change everything that they want to change. Now, they're used in the digestion to break down foods and get, you know, create products. They're used for immunity, which they kill invaders, these enzymes. They're used in the construction of your body, bones and minerals and, I mean, bones and tendons and muscle and all that. The enzymes are catalyst chemistry, so they're catalysts. Catalyst means it makes something happen. Beep instantaneously and when I say instantaneously it would take sometimes hundreds of years to do the chemistry that can be done less in less than one second they say it can speed it up trillions of times it's so fast and it uses the half-lives of of um, atoms because in between every single one of these atoms there's a million little particles that have what they call half-lives or isotopes and they, they sort of discard them because they don't really know what to do about them. They're not really fully the same particles. They have missing little pieces. All right? And that's what allows them to fit back and forth like this and go and reconstruct the whole thing. So it turns a carrot into some kind of, I don't know, some kind of metal, some zinc or something, whatever they want. They can do anything they want with the particles. You know, there are certain margins. They have to be close. But when you're in like within phosphates, which is phosphorus, right? Phosphates are in your, your membranes. When that breaks down, it can go down to silicon and aluminum, or it can go up to sulfur. That's the, 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 what they call the decay. And every one of them can go up and down. So if I break this one down and move it up to sulfur, then the sulfur can move up to this, then that can move up to here and move, 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 move. And that happens less than one second. They can go move things way up the chart or way down the chart it's up to them and who is them bacteria now I said don't forget now the bacteria communities create ribosomes these little tiny balls and when they get turned on the enzyme that's inside of them pops out and it breaks something or builds something it does the digestion the immunity the construction and it does it using click chemistry, which means this thing is an enzyme. All right, right now we got an enzyme. And every one of these little magnetic signatures here has to find something that it wants to attract to or destroy. And it comes out and goes click, 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 and instantaneously, they're done. They're gone. And it can click thousands of times a second. And that's the, it's a magnetic click. Click, 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 and that wipes out whatever it's doing or breaks down whatever, and instantaneously. And it's because of all the different half-lives of the, the atoms. I'll show you the isotopes and the half-lives before long. But anyway, the catalyst 
with the half-life decay creates atoms instantly. When it, when it, if you need something to happen in your body, you sh it almost instantaneously will happen because all of these ribosomes are all over your body just waiting to be used. And if you need one, that chemistry sets there if you had the bacteria to create that r ribosome. And they free float around your body and they just wait to be turned on. So you hit it, boom, it should do whatever you need. I need some more calcium. I need some of this. I need some of that. So if somebody's trying to kill me over here, come down and, and kill that. That's what click chemistry is, and that's what the catalyst instantaneously, boop, done. Now, what else controls things in your body? Well, DNA, we all know, controls biologically virtually everything using codes. They say if this code is here, you're going to have five fingers. If this code is here, you're going to have two eyeballs. And this code, da, da, da. and if the codes are scrambled, something's not going to go right in the physical construction of the body. Yes, that's what DNA does. Um, but it all does it does a lot more than that. DNA has all kinds and even junk DNA is not junk. That junk DNA is really basically is your memory and um, all kinds of details about your emotions sit in there and your trauma regions sit in there. I believe that's my opinion. But junk DNA is not junk. It didn't, they didn't put ninety eight percent of the DNA in you and have no reason for it, trust me. Now what does all this mean? DNA controls biology. All right? DNA controls biology, and it sets up creatures like us, creatures like plants, creatures like, like um, bacteria, cats, dogs, lions, everything has a certain set of DNA that says, I'm going to be this particular living thing. Now, DNA in bacteria have a certain code in there that says, I am a bacteria. I create ribosomes. I do the chemistry that maintains bodies, grows plants, does everything. I am a bacteria. And I live in communities of hundreds of thousands of different species. And we all cooperate together. And so certain bacteria will bring me down a product and I will bring it over to a different bacterial enzyme and we all work together to keep the body in tune or the creature in tune or the tree in tune or the roots working correctly. And we all work together because we're a bacterial species and we all like each other. <laughs> Unlike humanity, they work together. Now, you can get some bad bacteria in there that doesn't like the other bacteria, and it will work against it, no question whatsoever. But bacteria controls the codes using enzymes. Bacteria control the universe. And I'm serious. I'm not kidding about this. Bacteria, nothing, not a single thing is going to happen without bacteria, because bacteria are the products, they're the, the, the factory that creates the enzymes. And if you don't have the enzymes, no chemistry in you is going to work whatsoever. Every single thing that's happening in your body right now is happening because of an enzyme. If the enzyme's not there, the product's not going to be there or the effect's not going to be there. You're not going to be able to protect yourself. You're not going to be able to make some kind of goo that glues together your cells. Or you're not going to be able to make some kind of an attack enzyme that clicks against invaders. And that's all based on the bacteria. So if you don't have the bacteria, you can easily die from not, not having the correct bacteria. Well, you do die from not having the correct bacteria in 99% of the cases. Something invades you. I mean, you get by a car, that's a little different story. But it, 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 as far as any kind of illness, basically, is some kind of bacterial imbalance. They're getting through your membranes and into your vital flesh. That's what cancer is and all that stuff. Bacteria has taken the back seat forever. And, oh, no, no, you know, back, bacteria, la, la, la. No, 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 no. Bacteria is one of those things that you really, really, really got to work with. And they, I believe they're starting to understand that now since the, the understanding of the layer of tissue that's in your body called the interstitium, which is a fluid-filled highway that control, it contains all these bacteria and enzymes in there. And they squirt all the way through the body. It's basically like your lymph system. And it's a very, very fine fluid containing these single-celled organisms and their ribosomes. And they flow all through your body.
Every cell is touched by them. And the ribosomes sit inside the cells. You can have millions, they're so small, you can have millions of those ribosomes inside of one cell in your body. But when you need them, click, they pop in and they do their click chemistry and they do it instantaneously. And then they do it with the half-lifes of all the molecules. And in between every single one of these atoms is a ton of half-lives. And that's how they work. They can pump them right up or they can pump them down. It's not, for bacteria, it's simple. Bacteria are just absolutely incredible little critters. Okay, so the web of life literally consists of these two particles. And they're everywhere in the universe. And they appear to be the same on Mars as they are on here on Earth. And in space and all the astro uh, asteroids and um, comets and so forth are biological, as far as I can determine. And I've looked pretty carefully. And I have some here that are also biological astro uh, meteorites. So this one right here, well, it's magnetic and it's a little lung, a tiny little lung. And I will show you this, and, I, and it even has a spur lock on it, which is the signature of body parts where they fuse into the rest of the body so that they stay in their positions. I will show you all of these things. And, um, and then this is going to be a, a journey, my friends, because everything we know about, we need to reassess minimum. And most of this will be found to be necessary to make some alterations at the least. So let's um, stick with me. That's all I can say. Okay, my friends, complete change in physics. This is a proton. A proton is not one big positive ball. It is a dipole, which means it has a bunch of black positiveness to it and then a bunch of glowy negativeness to it in a ball of 1,823 particles. And they are all made of these two particles together, glued together. They call them gluons right here. These are the two particles. This one has all the energy, this one has all the mass. Glued together, they make what we always consider was an electron. Two of these back to back make a photon. This is energy and heat and electricity. This bounces. When those hit you, they bounce off and you see it as light. Now due to this new theory, things are going to change. Chemistry has to change. The redshift in space is it's just light slowing down. It's not everything going away. Things in space, we don't even know where they are. We have no clue now. Distances, we got a lot of work to do in that. To, to, to account for this, if you say this is no longer just one big positive, and it's half and half positive and negative as a proton, that changes everything. Changes everything. 